And obviously alternate tunings, right? Yes. Let me ask you this. Do you know how to play in like standard tuning? To some degree. Do you have any guitars at home that are in standard tuning? I think so. Like you I think could, I, yeah, I mean. Like you could pick up a, a guitar in standard tuning and play a little thing. I can play Louie Louie and yeah. you know, <laughs> smoke on the water. I mean, but I'm not been like not all the way through. I, mean, I, I, I was never in a cover band. Right. And when I first started as, as a teenager, I had a, I have an older brother who really like sat down and with his friends in the late 60s, early 70s, really just like all day long playing with Jimi Hendrix records, playing with 10 Years After records, playing with Cream records. He was and is a remarkable traditional guitarist. Right. And, um, and I would play when he wasn't around. I would, I would take his guitar and I would play it. And so I kind of, I, I gleaned the knowledge. There was, you know, I, I, I kind of got it. And right. so I, I, you know, to, um, yeah, I mean, I can, I can play you know, major you chords. And there then, you go. I, okay. I can play some minor chords. I can play some bar <laughs> chords. And then, okay. and, uh, I, you know, when I, um, the first Sonic Youth record, the eponymous titled record, uh, it's like a mini EP, like 12, um, that's, I, that is all um, standard tuning. Really? Yeah. And so when we first got together, we were, that was the, the first stuff we were doing. And so the guitar, like the, um, First track on that record is called "The Burning Spear," and it's using that effect. And I'm just start, and I start chiming the guitar. And a lot of the material on that record was all in in standard tuning. There's only like, I mean, there's like what six songs on that record, I think. And um, and then, but it, soon thereafter, almost immediately, you after got recording that stuff. All tunings. Because uh, we were only together for. Um, uh, you know, a couple of months when we made that record, you know, and it was an offer to us by by Glenn Bronco, who started the label called label, Control. He right. said, and he saw us playing. We did like maybe a gig or two, and he saw it because his musicians had a band, and he wanted to see what we were up to. He said, "Well, you're going to be the first thing on my my label." He's so like, "You guys are great, but you got to get out of that standard." Tuning. <laughs> yeah. <I think> so. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Well, okay. So, so alternate tunings. Yeah. You know, like uh, when a lot of people think of that, it's like a nice open E or an open G or something. And you guys do wacky, weird tuning. I suppose so. I mean, but they're esoteric yeah, yeah. droniness. Yeah, but they were never designed to be too um, perverse or anything. I and in, in, in actually. You know, when I started getting into sort of wanting to sort of try different tunings, you know, I was working with, with Glenn Bronco and Reese Chatham, and they were working in alternate tunings, and they were, they were really sort of, um, their focus was on creating like an ensemble where these tunings work together. And it was very, you know, it, 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 you know, it, was, very, it was very analytical in a, in a, in a, in a, for what they were doing. Um, and I kind of wanted to open it up a bit. I didn't really want to sort of, um, seriously look at that kind of notation for the tunings and so what I would do is I would open strum the guitar no matter where it was it could have been a traditional tuning it could have just been like picked up and that's okay. where it was and I would slowly be moving the pegs up and down up and down so I found an open um, an open chord that I thought was awesome right okay and that's that, that's how a lot of uh, the, the the SY tunings were established. Now Lee had his own, brought his own things in as well, um, and at, at first it was uh, it was there was the three of us. It was Lee, Kim, and myself, and Kim, playing guitar. Um, but the bass was always traditional tuning. It was okay. A, and that very rarely did that did that alter. Is that still how you find alt, alt tunings, just by kind of tweaking? Like, yeah. That's how you've always done yeah. it. Yeah. Um, and then, and then, I, and then I, I refine them, I modify them, I, you, know, I, I, you know, using tuners, I, I sort of exact them. Sure. And, you know. um, when I think of a lot of your music that uses alternate tunings, a lot of it is like there's a drone note that you can play over it, yeah. right? Or you can like play a little melody and then be like bashing on the lower string or something. But the other thing is like it's a really interesting composition, compositional tool which makes like mm -hmm. some things that would be impossible to play in a standard tuning. Yeah. I remember being a kid trying to figure out Skip Tracer. I don't know if you remember right. that song. Yeah, yeah. And like you just can't figure that out being a 14 year old 
in a standard <laughs> tuning. But so that's like that's another interesting angle of like an alt tuning is like you can totally open up brand new doors yeah. like that would other otherwise be impossible. You know, trying to play guitar yeah. that way. I wasn't quite aware of like. Um, the history of alternate tunings in not only rock music but in music in general. I mean, that I, my, that awareness would become more apparent as as the years went by. But um, I never thought of like even when I first heard the, the Velvet Underground that they were employing different tunings. I just thought of it as like this is incredible music. Sure. And there was a lot of drone aspect to that music, and it really draw it really brought me more into my interest in like in drone music as a classical music coming out of uh, coming out of the East and, and sort of and, and how legitimate and how serious that music was and the value of it as music being uh, you know a, a spiritual discourse you know? sure and so I, I kind of like really like to balance that with what excited me about rock and roll music and other musics jazz rhythm and blues etc so that, that finding this this kind of relationship in those musics well, the Velvet Underground was kind of there, and a lot of that came with, from I think John Cale's studies, right. what he was doing with his viola, um, and certainly Lou Reed was like doing things like. But you know, finding out that Keith Richards was doing these open blues tunings that were coming from <laughs> right. study studying blues guitar players. Right. Who, um, when you think about blues guitar players, it's like where were the, what was where was their information coming from? Like what is that source and. That was always curious to me. That's like, interesting you bring that up because my whole thing, even like driving over here, I was like, it's so weird because like for, j even specifically the jazz master, talking about source material, like for me, it's like you guys are the source material for open tunings, jazz masters, feedback, all that, all that stuff. So that's just fascinating. Well, we made, we made a, um, we made a big deal out of it. Right. Um, and so <laughs> I, I think, but I think that's, but you know what, it wasn't like we, I, mean, I don't think we had a, our agenda wasn't like to become like what we became. Our agenda was just to get from one day to the next. And it was a very neighborhood kind of thing. Right. Um, and I don't think it, we didn't have any foresight into like whatever profile that we would attain like in, the, in you know, the 1990s or whatever like that. Sure. It didn't. And, but it was, it was really great seeing um, responses to what we were doing. Because at first it was just completely polarizing. When we played, sure. it was just like the room would clear. You know, it's like, what is that? You know, it's like, <laughs> right. and, um, but you know, I, my favorite bands were the bands that were room clearers anyway. So that's, that's the pantheon I wanted to be in. You just watched a preview of Fender Play's alternate tuning collection. Click the link to learn more tunings, then put your skills to use by learning to play the songs you love. The Fender Play app offers a completely customizable learning experience for anyone who wants to learn to play guitar, bass, or ukulele. And you can track your progress while you learn to play using over 3,000 lessons and innovative practice features like our chord challenge, backing tracks, and weekly gear giveaways. Click the link to sign up for your free trial of Fender Play today. No credit card required.